constitutional analysis, that's a resolution. The United States federal government should significantly increase the federal minimum wage. The definitions will be contextual. This will be judged through a uh, inclusive, all net benefits inclusive plan. The United States federal government will pass SB 1150 to raise, it's the Raise the Wage Act. I will repeat, the United States federal government will pass SB 1150, Raise the Wage Act. Funding and enforcement will be normal means. Timeline is immediately. Solvency. Number one, plan increases the federal minimum wage to $8 an hour in 2016, $9 an hour in 2017, $10 an hour in uh, 2019, and $12 an hour uh, in 2020. And annually will increase, um, will increase it starting in 2021 by indexing it to the median wage. Uh, the second problem we see here is this also phases out the sub-minimum sub -minimum wage for tipped workers. On to advantage one, decreasing poverty. A is the uniqueness, number one. The, uh, the U.S. Census Bureau, according to the U.S. Census Bureau, 45 million Americans are impoverished. That's 15% of the population, and this has not changed since 2010. Uh, unique, uniqueness point number two, the... Um, the uh, according to the Corporation for Enterprise Development, 43% of American families would be pushed into poverty by um, a single loss of income crisis. So that would be like something like a, a, a health care crisis or a, a car crash or anything like that. Number three here is the economic, according to the Economic Policy Institute, a $12 minimum wage would directly or indirectly increase the wages of 35 million Americans or that's one fourth of the entire labor population, labor force. Number four, um, I'm that's out number four. Moving on. Uh, the link here is that the plan passes and there's an increase in the federal minimum wage. The um, internal link, number one, one quarter of American households will experience substantial increases in their income. Number two, internal link number two. Um, I'll get to it at the end of this. Thank you. Internal link number two. It, this is a perception that the economy is doing well. This will increase investment. The impacts here are poverty. Okay. According to the Columbia School of Mailman School of Economic Policy, 125 million Ameri or, million, 125,000 Americans die a year in poverty. Number two is the according to the CDC, every for if a woman, poverty is more dangerous to a to a newborn baby than if a woman had smoked a pack of cigarettes every single day through all nine months of pregnancy. Number three. Um, According to the University of Chicago, the United States loses an aggregate $500 billion a year in everything from healthcare costs um, to, uh, to police to incarceration because of the poverty rate. Um, what's your question? My question is, so for the next four years where it's not 12, you just let all these people die since you don't raise it for four years to $12 and all your solvency is based on $12? That will be answered in, in, in uh, advantage number two. Okay. Okay, advantage number two, unions. A is the uniqueness. Number one, congressional re according to the Congressional Research Service private sector, um, union membership has fallen from 37 to 6, 37 percent to 6 percent in 2014. Number two, according to Gallup, people favor unions but are pessimistic about their lack of clout and power. Number three, according to Princeton um, uh, history professor Julian Zelzer, unions' clout in democracy, in democratic policy circles, is an all-time low. Number four, according to UCLA's Institute for Research on Labor, and employment. Minimum wage um, increases approved in LA and elsewhere are most are most likely to increase union um, uh, union enrollment because employers recognize the narrow the narrow gap between union and non-union salaries. Uh, the link number one passage gives unions or the only link passage gives union a major federal level win. Okay, at the point in which. Uh, at, at the point which uh, uh, unions have a like are perceptually seen as being as being um, high in the status quo, we have a better federal minimum wage. Moving on to the internal link. This number one. This win counteracts public pessimism, prompting mobilization. Number two. The improved public perception of unions and especially. Uh, Union work, unions like SEIU means that workers in service sector um, in service sector uh, jobs are more likely to join unions. Number three, according to the EPI, um, continued union strength is key to preventing long-term rollback of measures that favor workers and decrease inequality. Num uh, moving on to the impacts. Number one, 
cross apply all of the poverty stuff I talked about from Advantage One. Unions are uniquely key for three reasons. Number one, according to a study from Harvard, the decline of organized labor explains a fifth to a third of the growth in inequality over the last 40 years, an effect, um, and, and, an effect comparable to the growing stratification of wages by education. Number two, According to the Center for American Progress, a 10 percentage point increase in a uh, geographic area's union membership is associated with low income distributions. This relationship between unions and the mobility of low income children is at least as strong as the relationship between mobility and high school dropout rates. Okay, you will be preferring the affirmatives plan because not only do our impact solve in the short and medium term. They also solve in the long term. We start bringing people out of poverty now. And as inflation, is inflation increasing? As inflation is increasing, I'm gonna pretend like it is. As inflation is increasing, we also solve for the long term. More people out of poverty means more people can join unions, which means more, which means their children and their children's children are not in poverty, and there's not a greater risk for them being in high school dropout rates. Which question? Which part of that advantage answers the question about you not You can make those orders? arguments in your LOC. Mm. Okay. Move on. I strongly urge a vote for the affirmative team. So it's going to be three off and then Three off and then place in order. Are you all ready? First off is the topicality. A is the interpretation. The minimum wage is the lowest amount employers may legally pay to non-tipped workers. The violation is that what they don't meet with in that they raise the minimum wage for everyone. The second violation is that they are extra topical, which means they are going beyond the bounds of the resolution by raising the minimum wage for tip workers. C is the standards. One is limits. That you should prefer the most limiting definition because it allows us to best understand the meaning of individual words in the resolution. Two is field context. This is how the Department of Labor defines the minimum wage, meaning it is the consensus as well as what your own agent of enforcement believes it is. Votes are a priori, which is that you will evaluate this before the rest of the debate because we must decide whether we're discussing the topic before what the topic is before we can evaluate the debate. Second is fairness, and third is education. Fourth is NPDA rules. We try the act to affirm the resolution. Fifth is that if we don't debate the topic, it leads out in the collapse of the debate. Now, next is the, the disadvantage, which is business confidence. A is the uniqueness. One, business confidence is high in the status of quality. New York Times says that consumer spending is up by 4.2% for quarter two, and consumer confidence is delayed to business confidence because consumers are expected to spend more in businesses like that. Second is that business confidence will stay high in the status quo. Businesses are currently increasing wages by 2.5 percent, which is higher than last year, so they expect to continue going. And three is that businesses are poised to massively expand when Brexit is cleared up and all that mess happens, and when Hillary inevitably defeats Trump, and that uncertainty is gone. Okay, Lynch is that the plan passes and slowly raises the minimum wage, creating the perception that our economy is not strong enough to handle a significant increase in the minimum wage until 2020. And this means that we create the perception of weakness. And when businesses think that the government sees the economy as weak, they will be reluctant to invest. Second, it also eliminates uh, free capital for these businesses. They don't have as much money to spend on increasing other things. 
And also, the internal link is that a lack of business confidence in the United States causes the United States economy to collapse, and two is that business confidence is key to the world economy, and three is that the United States economy is key to the stability of the world economy. The impacts are that this sudden shift in perception towards the image that the economy is actually weak rather than strong that will result in the economy suddenly collapsing, which will lead to massive poverty and will also lead to resource wars that will inevitably do to a nuclear due to risk of this time. Can you give another link that says that they have to fire employees because they can't afford to have the same amount of staff when they increase the wage? And another link is that they have to fire employees when they won't have the same, because they, they won't be able to have the same amount of staff when the rates increase. Okay. And also, one more thing on the links to this kind is that increasing the minimum wage that will reduce the free movement, of freedom of capital, which means that businesses will have to raise prices of goods and will have less time. Okay, so now on case these. The first argument is that this is not passing the status quo. Okay, so the first argument on case is no inherency. This is going to pass in the status quo. They have not read any wars as to why it won't pass. There is already bipartisan support for this bill as a compromise between the current situation and raising it to 15 an hour, which is what the far left wants. This is going to be absolutely critical on the BizCon disadvantage because we will be doing it sooner, which is unpredictable to businesses. And also, their argument about their second solvency point about phasing out the subminimum wage is proven of use on the topicality. The, yeah. Now, the um, advantage so one turn this A is. No. Yeah, so turn the states, uh, states are going to raise the minimum wage in Alabama, Louisiana, and South Carolina, which they don't have a minimum wage, but they are currently willing to pass bills that make the minimum wage $12 an hour in their own state. But now, the, the B point is that the federal minimum wage will mean that these plans won't be necessary and won't even happen. We, and when this happens, this means that people in those states where there are 10 million people making no minimum wage who are in poverty, that these people will not will continue to be in poverty for years and will continue to suffer because of it. Now on to their advantage. Also on their advantage, one of the second internal link that they, they say this creates the perception that the economy is doing well. But it's not for two reasons. One, that it creates the perception that the economy is unstable because of how carefully we're raising the minimum wage, as I said, on disadvantage. One, and two, that it will cause businesses to fear increasing government regulation and with the government passing the bill sooner than expected, they will actually be less confidence, which will mean that it will create the perception that the economy is not doing well. So that's a turn on internal links. Two, which means that their impacts are actually a reason to vote for us. And also on unions, the <coughs> So, the unions are not providing any more saying that unions are supporting this now. This, this, this also, unions are weak in the industries where minimum wage does tend to be common, like retail and fast 
food also, this will also turn on this. It will cause a negative public perception of unions because businesses will become more antagonistic towards unions if they blame them for the increase in the minimum wage, which will result in more lobbying and Congress to hurt the power of unions. So we need to exactly what <coughs> So it's going to be the top value. It's going to be the same order. So same order that you just said it's going to be the same thing.
Um, there's all, on to their impacts. No economic collapse. If an economic collapse would have been possible by increasing their own wage, it would have been triggered by the Brexit, which was a much larger multinational economic downturn, which means that the history of what just happened not triggering their impacts shows that their impacts are definitely not going to happen in the future. Um, on to the topic case. For the inherency. Um, one, there's no reason to not vote for the plan just because like, they say that, like, oh, Oh, there's also no warrants. Yeah, there's also no warrants here. There's no support because the Republicans control both the House and the Senate currently, and they don't want to raise the minimum wage, which is why we should increase the minimum wage um, through our plan. Um, anything else? Uh, arms to they okay. So they said they turned. They said that state arms. Oh, I'm just gonna say this top case. Oh, top. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Onto the first um, advantage of poverty. Um, the plan, the plans that they're talking about in these southern states increase the minimum wage and they're saying they won't pass just because we're doing it. First, there's no reason that a state can't pass a plan in accordance with federal law. That's not against the law. You, the federal, the feds can definitely increase the minimum wage and the states also increase the minimum wage. It has happened. Two, the plans aren't even going to pass the talking about in these states because those are Republican controlled states that aren't in favor of increasing the minimum wage anyways. Um, Onto the rest of, you can go ahead and extend across the uniqueness, which means that we are, we're winning the debate that lots of people are in poverty right now, and that people are really on the brink between falling into poverty right now, so you should take this um, plan in order to solve that. Extend across my impacts of poverty, um, being cyclical, 125,000 people dying a year, that is only solved by the affirmative. Okay, they put a link on our internal, or, or they put a turn on our internal link saying that the econ is not doing well. Number one, can we get a warrant? And number two, they just, uh, they just link them themselves because they're only making us talk about how the economy is doing great. So yeah. can we get yeah. a warrant? Please? Yeah, on the internal, on the internal link level, they try to turn it by saying that e the economy is really bad right now and that like this is really bad right now. However, this is directly refuting their own ethos and in their first, in their only disadvantage, they talk about business confidence being at an all-time high right now. Um, there's also no evidence for this um, provided. Yeah, they say there will be a decrease in confidence. Again, no warrant. Yeah. Okay. Um, so on the yeah, on the second advantage, they say that if businesses, um, they say that if the minimum wage increases, businesses are going to become antagonistic, and that's going to decrease union membership. I don't know about you, but first thing that comes to my mind when I think about like actually fighting for workers' rights against businesses, antagonizing workers, is the union. That's the point of the union. So if anything, even if you um, buy that businesses become more antagonistic, which isn't going to happen because the economy is going to increase, then and they're going to be making more money because more people are going to be buying stuff from their stores because people are going to have more money. Then at the very very least, the antagonism increases union membership and solves for the, all the impacts they're talking about. They don't touch at all that union membership is on the decline, that people don't believe in the power of unions, and that the unions, and that this will create a perceptual win for the unions. They talk about how like there's no reason that um, unions like this. Unions have always been fighting for two things: workers' rights, and minimum wage. That's all. That's what they talk about. They're talking about giving health care to workers. They're talking about increasing minimum wage. Look at the AFL-CIO and all the initiatives that they've lobbied, trying to pass in Congress for this to happen. Onto the impacts. We, we solve for the impacts of poverty better with our union advantage, which means that we ensure long-term solvency. Raising the minimum wage does increase the lives of people across America in poverty, and increasing union membership and union strength ensures that solvency throughout future generations by making sure that we fight income inequality, which is going to be um, critical for this debate. Um, we even solve their own business confidence disadvantages um, with the union um, membership. The World Trade Organization stated that there are two things we need to do to combat income inequality, which is at, which is at risk of decreasing the economy, and that's increasing their own wages and decreasing union membership. Thank you. The order is going to be the topicality, a little bit on our discount disadvantage and then just in case in order. Uh, I normally just go for tea, but we're learning today, so I'm gonna cover a few things. Everyone's good? You all set? Yeah. I don't know if there was a lecture on tea today, but they probably should have attended it because they have completely failed to answer this position. Let's talk about why topicality is important as debaters. This is one of the first sort of tech arguments you learn. It's a question of what the resolution was intended to actually talk about, right? So we provide you a definition. Let me repeat that to you one time. It says that the minimum wage, as defined by the Department of Labor, is the lowest amount employers may legally pay to non-tipped workers. 
There's a reason that it is specifically worded like that. That is because there is a second minimum wage that only applies to service employees who are being tipped. That is part of their income, right? The resolution, however, says the United States federal government should significantly increase the federal minimum wage. It does not say increase the federal minimum wages. It is singular rather than plural. So let's get into this discussion of a violation. Our first violation specifically says that you don't need, because you are not talking about the federal minimum wage, you are talking about passing a bill that changes multiple federal minimum wages. The second one, though, that is unresponded to is that FX and extra topicality are illegitimate. Let me explain what that means. FX topicality, as they responded to, means that they take multiple steps to get to the plan. Extra topicality means that they do the plan and go beyond it. That is just as theoretically illegitimate. What they have done is gone beyond the call of the resolution via raising just the minimum wage and have instead raised both of them. That is our violation. You do not have a response to this. Their counterinterpretation specifically says, from no source, mind you, no dictionary, not the Senate, not the Department of Labor, simply that it is the lowest amount paid to workers. Obviously, you are preferring our definition at the point of first standard being limits. We are more specific. We are only talking about the actual federal minimum wage. When they discuss the federal minimum wage in Congress, all they are talking about is this one specific number that is currently set to 725. However, there is also the tipped worker minimum wage, which is substantially lower. It's somewhere in the area of $3. They are not talking about just the minimum wage, they are talking about both. But secondly is field context, and their only response to this is, well, the Senate is talking about this bill, so that means it's topical. That doesn't make any sense in a world where the Department of Labor, who would be your agent of enforcement, which is what we point out and you don't respond to, does not define it in this same way. That means that there is consensus within the field that says minimum wage means only one thing. Their plan does more than just that one thing. Those are articulations as to why they are not fair in this debate. His next argument specifically says that limits kills education. No explanation to this other than to say that we limit the things they can talk about. That same argument would say that they're entitled to talk about dinosaurs. I don't understand how that's important to your education, but apparently their response is them being able to talk about whatever they want is somehow better for you. Our response on limits specifically is that the definition that limits most limits best because it allows us to understand the meaning of individual words going on within the resolution, which allows for a better debate. So let's drop down to the most important part. His next argument is that you shouldn't vote because there's no articulated views. His argument says that we didn't have any arguments prepared that specifically would have talked about this tip wage. So let me read you the very first thing I wrote down in prep and he didn't read during his speech. Turn, masking tip workers. A is that there are two separate minimum wages. You only cover one, so service workers ultimately get screwed over because they're the ones who need this money the most but never get it. My second argument is that the plan makes people feel that these people who are actually in poverty are being helped, but in reality, this wouldn't apply to them. The third argument was that masking server minimum wage ensures no one advocates for their rights, so the recent discussion happening in New York, by the way, my partner actually does bring this up, uh, doesn't happen because there's questions of like these McDonald's workers and whether or not they should be paid more on this question. So, we clearly did have positions we were going to talk about with regard to that issue, but they have stolen those away from us by increasing both of these minimum wages. Drop down to the voters. Not a single answer to any of our voters. So let's just go ahead and extend those all. First off, we tell you that topicality is an a priori voting issue. To explain what that means, a priori says that this comes first in the debate. Even if you think literally every other sheet of this page they're winning, the business confidence, their union's advantage, all that stuff, there's no point in you even evaluating it because a rule violation has occurred. The second argument is that this was key to fair and a, a fair, oh, sorry, fairness and ground. Articulations mean that we should have an equal division of ground, that they have effectively stolen our ground in a world where they are also talking about these tip workers. But the next argument was that it's bad for education because it's not a predictable world of education when we try and prepare something in prep time, right, which is where most of the education occurs because that's where you have access to coaches and things like your computers. They instead would say that education is just them being able to talk about whatever they want. But the next argument that is incredibly damning is that this is literally a rule of the game. The NBDA rule book section 2B specifically says that the app must affirm the topic. They do not do so in a world in which they go beyond this. And our final argument, which is also not responded to, is that ultimately in a world where you are not topical, you lead to the collapse of the debate. Because if the game is unfair, nobody wants to play the game. We have to agree on the rules of the game before we can play that game. These are reasons why I don't need to read anything else in this debate, and we would still win. But I'm going to do it for the sake of education. Let's go to this topic. The first argument on BizCon that we specifically articulate is that business confidence is high right now. We have several warrants coming from the New York Times as well as other things specifically talking about how in the wake of the Brexit businesses are attempting to expand and they are ultimately failing to respond to this. This is the question. 
When businesses have to pay workers more every single year, from now on, forever, because of their plan, do you think that means businesses ultimately have less money every single year? The answer to this question is yes. They read one warrant that specifically says, well, at Walmart, this only results in a $12 increase, which means, yeah, at Walmart, this only results in a $12 increase, but every single business in the United States has a similar increase, which means every product, every person in the United States ever goes to buy again is now more expensive, which means that ultimately you cause these issues. But the internal link scenario specifically is that you are killing BizCon because there's this perception that the economy is tenuous as of right now. Right now we think it's strong, but in a world where suddenly the government's decided that, oh God, people aren't making enough money, people are afraid to actually invest money because they don't know if they're actually going to have any in the next year, which ultimately leads us to the internal link scenario, where we tell you in a world where the United States economy collapsed, Ultimately, that collapses the global economy because we are the sort of global leader within the economy and are directly tied to all these other nations, which on the impact level means we're not just talking about poverty within the United States like they are. We're talking about poverty on a global scale. They're talking about potentially 300 million people, whereas we're giving you an analysis about the sort of 7 billion others who might also matter. And for instance, are already substantially poorer than the people in the United States are. Probably the reason you're going to die with those arguments. Let's go to their position. The first argument is also a question of poverty. First off, all of my analysis on the disadvantage is able to be applied here. But most importantly, I want you to look at this first argument there. The very first thing they tell you is that $12 would solve. The entirety of this advantage is predicated on the idea that $12 will solve. I want you to look at their plan text and tell me if next year it goes to $12. Or the next year. Or the next year. Or finally the year when we get to it. These are ultimately indications that if they hurt business confidence, as we've articulated, immediately, that happens today and that continues to happen, that collapses the economy before we even get to this question of four years from now, maybe one of you gets out of poverty. That's probably a reason for further disadvantage. Let's go to unions. The first argument on unions, and really the only one that matters, is they have no warrants whatsoever as to how unions are specifically tied to these issues. They don't read anything in the first part of the case that tells you that unions are advocating for this. They just say that the Senate does something completely independent of unions, and unions look freaking fantastic as a result. The only other argument I want you to analyze is Allen's argument. That the people who aren't making this money right now, the people who work in retail and fast food, minimum wage employees, aren't in unions, which means it doesn't matter if there's a union perception because it doesn't actually help those individuals. You're voting on tea or wherever else you want. Okay, so for my speech, I'm going to do overview and I'll be focusing on the tea, so you'll probably want to have that seat of paper. Okay. This is going to be an easy decision for the negative because the T comes first. They have conceded that, and we are winning the T, which means that, as my partner explained, if you win a topicality, you win, as a name, you win the entire debate. That is true because we cannot decide who wins the debate until we decide how we're having the debate, and the vital part of that is agreeing on what the topic will be. So, none of their arguments matter in a world where they are not topical. Now let's look at why the Nadeson team is winning the team. First of all, they have no offense on the team. That means that since they have no reasons to prefer their child to standard, and they drop one of the reasons to their child interpretation, and they drop one of our reasons to prefer our interpretation, that means that uh, the very best that they can get uh, would be a tie, but that's not happening because they dropped the field context standard. Their own agents of enforcement wouldn't agree with their definition. And it's not good for education if you advocate for the Department of Labor to use a definition that they themselves don't agree with or hold. And this field context standard is preferable because anyone can have an opinion on what the minimum wage is, but the best opinion is not those of the people in this room, but the people who actually enforce the real minimum wage, the Department of Labor. That is critical that we are winning the T on that. And next we look at their we meet, which makes no sense. 
they do only say that they meet because they raise the regular minimum wage, while they actually don't because they're establishing a new minimum wage that does not already exist. Furthermore, even if you buy that they are raising the minimum wage for non-tipped workers rather than creating a new universal minimum wage, they are still extra topical as they have conceded and as my partner points out in his speech. And if they are extra topical, that is unfair because if you allow teams to be extra topical, what's the point of even having resolutions if you can just do the resolution and do whatever you want, and if we don't have resolutions, we might as well out join APDA and become Ted Cruz. <laughs> <laughs> and also, another thing you want to look at on this is that they did not try to frame this true reasonability, which those of you who are going to be member of government on the app should remember to should eventually learn to do. If we are even slightly ahead of the T, if we are winning 51% of the T over 49%, we still win the entire debate. This means that since they dropped one of our standards, it's pretty clear which team is going to win. And also, in, for the, in case you're not voting on the T, on the dis ad, we are winning on time frame because our economic collapse happens four years before any of their impacts happen. Two reasons why this is preferable. One, due to time frame, they will not be able to access their impacts in a world where the economy has collapsed and everyone's in poverty. And two is magnitude. We prevent six billion people now from suffering from an economic collapse, and they only help 300 million people. So we are really on a substantive debate as well. for tipped workers, and our friends over here could have made about 15, argu 15 no-solve arguments, but instead they spent four minutes talking about topicality, so y'all can get an education. Point of order. Any responses to the extra topicality is new. They <coughs> only responded to FX topicality. Fine. FX to talk about topicality. Okay. There is no reason to vote down the app, which is clearly winning the substance of the debate. Uh, um, extra topicality is not a voter. Topicality is, but that is not a topicality. You say we do the plan and then some, which is the best oh. an example. Oh, which is best an example of extra topicality, which is not a reason to vote the app down. Okay, again. They spent four minutes talking about freaking topicality. They could have been making a ton of different arguments on case. We're going to prefer education. Let me educate you about the freaking economy here, which our friends still provided no warrants. Can I get a warrant? Okay, so first of all, onto the onto the biz time here. According, they say that like uh, you know unions and all like if we if we sorry not on unions. This is biz time. They say that if we increase the minimum wage, all of the stuff that you buy at Walmart is gonna be more expensive. But according to, there's no link here, so according to the Center for Labor Resources, Walmart would only have to increase prices by 1.1%, at which is an average annual cost to consumers of, what is it? $12.50 a year. Okay, so, on the BizCon, more on the BizCon, thank you so much for giving us a huge, a ton of arguments that the Republicans always yell at their, at their opponents across the aisle. They say, that they're, that they're winning on time frame. However, they did not listen to any of the arguments, any of the impact scenarios that were brought up in our unions, and I'll get back to that. Okay, there are no link arguments on the BizCon. They say that all of this, there will be this huge economic collapse and all of this terrible stuff will happen. They give no warrants as to how raising the federal minimum wage will collapse the freaking economy. They give no warrants. Can I get a warrant, please? Okay. On case, first of all, again, they make no econ collapse, they make a bunch of econ collapse generic stuff, okay. Republicans control the House and the Senate. We need to pass this bill, we need a fiat it, done. 
They, um, they don't answer any of our answers to turns and whatnot, okay? So like they say like, oh, states are gonna go ahead and do, the states are gonna go ahead and pass the federal, or the minimum wages, however, all the states that uh, were listed in the LLC are Republican control. So none of, none of the work that they did on our Advantage One has any, number one, has any warrants, and number two, doesn't even actually go along with any kind of reasoning that functions with how the economy works. They also give no break arguments on our unions, on our unions. Um, they make a bunch of arguments at the end about how unions were what, terrible or something. Yeah, they say that unions have no relation. Yeah, they, they say that, they're, that unions are bad or something like that, but unions are really good because they push for federal minimum wage. Hey, guess what? That's what we're doing. Okay, on impact calculus here. If you forget the four and a half minutes that were spent about the topicality, we can get down to some real education. 125,000 people die a year from poverty, period. You're gonna prefer a plan because we're giving people money. Don't you want some money at your crappy minimum wage jobs? You totally do, so on probability, we're winning on probability that's worth saving 125,000 people a year, and I'm also educating every single one of you on how bad poverty is and how raising the minimum, federal minimum wage would actually make it better for all of those people. So we're also still winning on the topicality. Time frame. Okay. First of all, we do it immediately. The first advantage pointed out that we've had short-term and medium impacts, okay? We start to bring people, we start to mitigate poverty and we start to bring people out of poverty. The second advantage on unions. The decline, okay, organized labor is a fifth of all, or is a fourth of all labor of, of the entire labor force. You're going to prefer an impact that has long-term benefits, that benefits unions, okay? Unions are the people that speak for you. On magnitude, we're affecting every single person that is affected, that gets paid by the federal minimum wage. You will prefer, you will prefer our plan. Anything else? All right. I strongly urge a vote for the affirmation.